Now, one of the things that uh, a lot of people claim, uh, particularly for over-unity motors like Bedini, for example, um, is the amount of time that things run for. Now, I just want to uh, to add a word of caution at this point. Uh, just because something runs for a long time doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, that it's over-unity. Just because something charges the battery doesn't mean it's over-unity. Uh, you actually have to prove the power in, the power out, and the time has to make some sense over and above uh, what you would normally expect. So, for example, for my little motor, uh, which is lurking around here somewhere, and it's not running, well, I suppose I could make it run, couldn't I, just for fun? Let's just see if it still goes. It's not very happy today. Oh, it's running backwards. Something's moved, that's why. Oh, it's not a very happy little motor today. Oh, there we go. I thought I'd upset it. But off it goes running. And I can measure the supply voltage from the batteries, uh, and I can measure the current taken from the batteries, the average current using a standard multimeter. I'll turn it off because it makes a noise. Now what do I know is I know that my um, my motor takes about 100 milliamps. Um, 100 milliamps is the same as 0.1 amps. And I know that the capacity of my batteries my Duracells um, is 2.75 ampere hours. Now what that means is that you can provide 2.75 amps for an hour, or you can provide half of that for two hours, or four times that for four hours, and so on and so forth. So in terms of calculations, uh, my motor takes 100 milliamps, which is 0.1 of an amp. The capacity of the batteries is 2.75 ampere hours. Uh, the runtime is therefore 2.75, which is the number of ampere hours, divided by the number of amps, which is 0.1. So my motor will run, in theory, quite happily on a fully charged set of batteries for 25 points, sorry, 27.5 hours. Now if I use this battery to charge another battery, uh, which is completely empty and completely dead, and I can run for significantly longer than that, then I think I've got some evidence for, for suggesting uh, over unity. Uh, of course, the initial set of batteries would have to be completely flat. If I start off with two completely full sets of batteries, um, then of course I'd expect it to run for twice as long as that um, anyway. So I could run on my first set of batteries for a couple of hours, and then I could swap it over and run on my second set of batteries for a couple of hours. And the total amount of run time with two sets of batteries um, would expect it to be 27.5 times 2, uh, which is, what, 55, 55 hours or thereabouts, Okay, which is quite a long time especially if you're only running for a few hours a day. Um, that could run into several days or even a couple of weeks. So it'd be very easy to fool yourself into thinking that you have an only over-unity device just because you've got quite large battery capacities. And if you look at the um, batteries that some people are using to power their motors, um, we're talking something the size of a house. I mean, we, you know, I, I'm using small Duracell batteries. Some people are using golf cart batteries. They're using car batteries. Um, if you look at some of the banks of batteries that Bedini himself uses in his uh, experiments, I mean, massive, massive numbers of batteries, huge amounts of capacity. Um, and it must be very, very difficult to run the motors for a sufficient length of time to prove that the motor is actually running longer than you would normally expect to run on those batteries. So, just a word of caution about how you measure time and that sort of thing. So, let's try and think of a foolproof way uh, of, of measuring something. Um, and let's have a little think about how we might do that.